16th August 1947, India celebrated with joy its first day of freedom. The dream that we all have seen in all our history classes is now becoming a reality and became a reality. India finally made its tryst with destiny. Our first Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru declared that the achievement we celebrate today on this day is an opening of an opportunity, an opportunity to greater triumphs, victories that awaits us. In 1947, when India gained its independence, India was one of the poorest, most backward, most illiterate, one of the most diseased societies on planet Earth. But today, we have raised our literacy from 16% back in those days to 80%, more than that in fact. Life expectancy has more than tripled since 1947. What was our growth rate? 1% or even less. Today, we are the third largest economy in terms of purchasing bar parity. Of course, there's a lot, many things that are wrong with India. And we all know that India has experienced heart-crushing failures, heart-crushing defeats. India has hosted many corrupt governments, a dark period of emergency, when Indians were deprived of even the basic civil liberties. But India has always gloriously bounced back. And it is that glorious spirit of India that is worth emulating, even for all of you, preparing to serve this country. India has mobile phone users today more than the combined population of the G7 countries. India's UPI does close to 7 billion transactions a month. And today, India's UPI is going global. Malaysia, Thailand, South Korea, Japan, France, Indian government has signed MOUs with more than 13 countries in that effort. The largest smartphone factory in the world is no longer in China or South Korea or Japan. It is right there in Uttar Pradesh, Noida. Of course, we have few morally corrupt officers, politicians, businessmen. But India also has glorious minds, like you, like many scientists in ISRO. You have dreams, aspirations, desire to live and die for this country. So when McKinsey CEO says that it is going to be India's century, he is not kidding. Forget about the decade, it has to be India's century. So much of potential in this nation. One of the youngest countries. Of course, the dream of United India was shattered. But the values and the ethos that India grew up is what makes India remarkable. India's freedom struggle did not just overthrow the colonial rule. It also showed us that the vision of free India what would that vision be like? And that vision is a vision of a democratic, secular India, built on the foundations of independent, self-reliant economy, which we will definitely decipher in greater length in economics and polity. Today's India aspires to bring social, economic equality. And thankfully, today's India is politically awakened, politically active. Only when the youngsters are politically active, they hold the government's accountable. And that's a beautiful thing. Even if they criticize the government, that is a good thing. It keeps the government on toes. So of course our country is imperfect, but I'm sure each one of you and each one of us will leave no stone unturned in building an India of our dreams that we had discussed in the past. We might never reach that end. And that is absolutely fine as long as we are moving closer towards that end. With this, we end the syllabus for history. A few minor topics are left that I will try to cover next week. But these lessons of history were designed not just to analyze, debate, history. That's the funny part. These were designed with the idea to beautifully introduce to you the story of India. The story of India is not just the story of Harappans or the Guptas or Pallavas. It's not the story of Mughals or Marathas. That story of India is a story of all of us. And therefore, cautious efforts were taken to intermix the concept of business with politics, concepts of economics with geography in crafting these lectures on history. All of your peers will study history, but none of them will appreciate it the way you will. You will have much more appreciation, much more second order thinking approach whenever you are analyzing whatever you are reading, not just history, but anything. As an instructor, my goal was never to teach you history in 50 lectures. No one can teach you history in those 50 lectures. 
or even 500 lectures or 5 million lectures that should never be the goal of an instructor the goal of an instructor is to just impart curiosity values impart the skill sets that can then be leveraged by all of you to learn things on your on your own that's the hardest part that was my goal and i'm fairly certain to all those who will watch the recordings also that this introduction to history is perhaps the best introduction anyone can ever have who is preparing who wants to snatch a good rank for upsc examination because we didn't just confine to history from psychology to many other aspects were discussed